Hi Angel Besties, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Rachel and welcome to my July wrap up. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the 11, I believe, books that I read in the month of July, what I thought about them, how my reading went as a whole for the month. Spoiler alert, not great. I had a very, very average reading month. I am sad to say I did not give out any new five stars for this month. Overall, kind of a disappointing month, but I did have like some pretty solid three and four stars that I'm excited to talk about with you all. So let's just get straight into it. Here are all the books that I read in July. All right, so first up, let's talk about the one five star that I did give out in the month of July, and that is Crown of Midnight. This is a reread, so I'm not quite counting it as a five star because I generally only reread books that I give five stars to. But as I have mentioned many times, I am in the middle of my Throne of Glass reread. I am rereading the entire series for the third time, and I finished Crown of Midnight this month. This was a really, really great rereading experience. I picked up on a lot of new things. I annotated this book quite a bit, had a really, really fun time with it. I really enjoy this book. You know, I definitely prefer the latter half of the series. I definitely think with the earlier books, there are some weaknesses, but I do, for like the nostalgia factor, enjoy reading this book. And I have to say, the ending of this book is wild. And I think it's one of the best endings of a book in the Throne of Glass series. It's really good. It's really strong, very shocking. And it just sets the entire series on a new direction and course. So definitely enjoyable. And yeah, this was the high point of my reading month. The next book that I read in the month of July was The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is the second book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, which is kind of like a YA fantasy romance. And in the first book, our main character Evangeline. She ends up making a deal with Jax, who is the Prince of Hearts, who will help her get the love of her life back in exchange for three kisses. But truly, the story really just takes a total spin from there, and we watch the dynamic between Evangeline and Jax as they go on a bit of an adventure together. This book was actually really, really fun. I really loved this book. I gave it four stars. I love Stephanie Garber's writing style. She is the queen of whimsical, magical writing to me. She creates such a fantastical world and kind of reminds me of like Alice in Wonderland, Mad Hatter type of setting and characters, and I really, really like reading her books because they always transport me. I love Jax. I like the plot. I really like it all. My one thing that I don't love about this series is unfortunately the main character, Evangeline. I just find her to be a little bit naive. I find her to just be a little bit annoying. If Evangeline was a bit more of a likable character to me, I could see myself giving this book a five star, but there's just some things about Evangeline that I find a little bit grating. But overall, I still really enjoy the series. I still look back on the first book and the second book fondly, and I'm very excited for book three, especially with the way that this book ended. Major cliffhanger, so crazy. I cannot wait to see how Stephanie Garber wraps this story up, but overall, a very solid book. The next book that I read in the month of July was Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is the first book in a YA mystery trilogy, I believe. There is a spinoff book, but I think there's just one solid trilogy called the Truly Devious trilogy, and this book follows our main character. Her name is Stevie. She ends up going to this kind of like boarding school where all of these students are studying very different things. They're all very unique, and the thing that attracts Stevie to the school is that there is sort of an unsolved murder mystery that occurred several decades ago at the school. And so we have a bit of a dual timeline. We're following Stevie as she's investigating this cold case, but then also we're going back in time and seeing the events that led to those very mysterious circumstances. I thought this was super fun. I had heard really great things about it, and I have to say I do agree with what a lot of people have said. It's very fun. The mystery is very interesting. I love the dual timeline. I like our main character Stevie. This setting up in New England, it's very aesthetic. It's very just cozy. I really, really enjoyed that. I will say, <laughs> I had heard before I started this, that the love interest of this series, his name is David, that he's kind of the worst. And I have to agree. Honestly, as soon as I met him, I was like, oh, I don't like you. And he never did anything to redeem himself. I'll be curious to see if he gets any better throughout the trilogy. But to be honest, I'm not really reading this for like the love story. That's just like a very, very subplot situation that I'll just kind of uh, ignore as I continue on with reading this series. But really, really like this. I want to read the second book in August. Hopefully the series just gets better and better. The next book that I read in July is The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson. This is the second book in the Remnant Chronicles, the first book being The Kiss of Deception. This is a YA fantasy romance trilogy. In the first book, we have a princess who is being forced into a marriage that she does not want to be a part of. So she runs away and she goes off to live in a village. But what she does not know is there are two men out searching for her. One is the prince that she left at the altar. And then the second is an assassin from an enemy kingdom. Book one, really, really loved. Super solid four star. I almost gave it five stars. And I was very excited to continue on with the story in book two. But I do have to say that book two was a little bit of a letdown. I gave this a 3.5. So nothing like majorly terrible. It's not much different from book 
book one for me, but I just was not super gripped by this story. I found there to be a lot of slow parts. I really, really wish that we had had a little bit more interesting, intriguing action throughout this. I feel like there was a lot of action going on in the first book. And in this book, I just wasn't as gripped. I, I don't really know what it was, but just, I think I had certain expectations for this book and they let me down a bit. I like the way that the love triangle was done in book one and how it's done here, I just wasn't super crazy about, but it's a 3.5. I liked it. I enjoyed my experience. I just didn't love it as much as I thought that I would. I will definitely be picking up the final book in the trilogy, which is The Beauty of Darkness. I'm excited to see this series through and I do hope that I love the finale a little bit more. All right, the next book that I read in the month of July was Shatter Me by Tahere Mafi. This book is obviously so well known, needs no introduction, right? I had been thinking about picking this book up for a while and I did ask you guys, should I read this? Should I pick this up? And so I read this for a 24 hour readathon. So this is a YA dystopian novel, the first book in a pretty long series, I think. And overall I have like mixed feelings, but I do walk away positively. When I first started the book, I was really not into it. The writing is very choppy in the beginning on purpose for sure. If you've read this book, you know, but I was not able to connect. I was really trying to find my way through this book and I was like, ooh, I just don't know if I like this. As the book went on, I did find the plot to be really, really engaging. I love a dystopian novel. I love a dystopian story. I really like a rebellion group going up against the powers that be, but there were just some writing issues that I had. And then also our main character in this book, Juliet, at this point, I'm not like super in love with her, but I do find some of the other characters very compelling, particularly Warner. I'm super curious to see what he's going to be doing in this book, where his role is going to go. And so I gave this book three stars didn't change my life, but I am intrigued and I have heard that the series just gets better and better. I would love to know if you've read Shatter Me, do you think it's definitely worth it for me to continue on with the series? Am I going to like where things go? Does Juliet go through a bit of a growth, a bit of a character arc in this series? That's kind of my biggest thing. I want to love Juliet more than I do at this moment. And so I'm hopeful that kind of with the plot and as the books go on, she will grow a little bit and change and just become more of a compelling main character. But I am glad that I read this and I'm excited to see where else this series goes. The next book that I read in the month of July was Five Survive by Holly Jackson. This is a standalone novel from Holly Jackson and it follows six friends who go on a road trip. Things go bad and their car ends up breaking down and they end up finding out that someone has sort of been hunting them down. This breakdown of their car may have not been an accident and they all kind of have to figure out how to survive the night. Of course, as the title says, Five Survive, six are going on this vacation, but only five will be making it out. This book was so much fun, particularly the audiobook. I'm 100% going to recommend. Really engaging, really, really tense and really just like made certain moments of this book for me. My favorite thing about this book was the setting of like all of these characters being trapped in one place, having danger right outside their door and them all turning on each other. Like I really, really liked that. Everyone was questioning one another. You didn't really know who to trust. And I think that the author did a really good job of casting doubt on a lot of different characters. I thought that this was really strong, really fun. And I ended up giving this book a three and a half star rating. For me, this could have been a four, like a very strong four star, but the twists at the end were just a lot. Like it just kept going and going and going and I did like some of the twists But then some of them were just a little bit too much for me I do try to like manage my expectations when I'm picking up a YA mystery or a YA thriller because it's a YA mystery. It's a YA thriller. You know, it's not going to be necessarily the most well-crafted, amazing, blow your mind twist. But sometimes I think the excess of all these twists and turns can take away from some of the quality of the book. And I think that that's kind of where I stand. But literally up until like the 90% mark, I was loving every minute of it. And I do think this is a book that if you like YA thrillers and mysteries, you should pick this up because it's really, really, really fun. The ending is just a little silly for me, but that's okay. All right. Speaking of a book with a silly ending, I I also read The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I have not picked up a Riley Sager book in several years, but back in the day, meaning like two years ago, I really loved Riley Sager. Home Before Dark is a five-star read for me. I absolutely love that book. Lock Every Door was a four-star read for me. His other books that I've read, I wasn't as crazy about, but those two really stick out as very strong books in my mind. Big parts of my reading journey as I was getting back into reading. But I feel like over the last few years, I've just heard so many mixed things about his releases that I haven't picked them up. And you guys know, I just am not really into adult thrillers at this point, but I had heard a lot of people say like, oh, Riley Sager is back. Oh, this is his strongest book in the last few years. And I was like, you know what? I wanna pick this up. I wanna listen to a thriller and see what I think. This is another book that was very, very strong for me from the beginning. I absolutely loved the setting of this book. I will always say Riley Sager is an amazing writer. His ability to craft a story, his ability to build onto what is eventually going to be our big plot twists, building our characters and our 
settings and all like he's just he's very very good at that I, I absolutely love his writing style in this book our main character she is a caretaker for the elderly and she ends up getting assigned to Lenora Hope who has this very kind of bad reputation in the town that she may have killed her entire family back when she was younger she's lived in isolation in this big estate on a cliff and our main character gets assigned to take care of her and starts to learn the story of what actually happened with Lenora back all those decades ago so once again dual timeline which was very fun and so atmospheric and I liked the way that everything was set up I liked our characters we had a lot of interesting characters once again great at casting doubt great at kind of pointing the finger at different people so you don't really know where things are going to end up but holy plot twists okay there were so so many plot twists and some of them were fun and then some of them I was just like Riley I, I can't do this anymore I'm exhausted overall the book was fun the book was definitely fun I gave it a three and a half star rating which you know for me that's pretty good it was just a lot at the end and I feel like if we had pulled back a little bit just like one or two things I think I would have maybe enjoyed it a little bit more but yeah it just got to be a lot towards the end I was exhausted <laughs> by the end but no I I overall enjoyed the book I just think that you know one too many plot twists for me but I think that overall the book itself is very well written I think that the atmosphere is really great I think that the characters were interesting and the story in itself is very very interesting so walking away from it with pretty good feelings the next book that I read in the month of July was A Kiss of Iron by Claire Sager you guys I was so disappointed by this book I wanted to love this so much I thought that this was going to be a major hit and it was not so this book follows a highway robber her name is Kat she once was this noble woman but she has lost all of her money and is doing doing whatever she can in order to survive, keep her estate, keep her employees paid. And one day she ends up getting approached by a representative from the queen. They want her to come and stay in the castle and essentially play spy master because the nearby fey kingdoms have started to show some interest in the queen and they want to know kind of what their motives are, what's going on. And because of Kat's expertise, I believe her nickname is like the wicked woman. Like she's a very notorious, well-known thief, spy, all of that. She gets hired into the situation and it's very intimidating. You know, she's like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this but she doesn't really have a choice because it's the queen and she will also get paid very well which will keep her and her staff employed and fed and all of that so she ends up agreeing to this and one of the main parts of her job is she needs to seduce the very mysterious dark-haired Bastion he's kind of like the right hand to one of the fey queens and they want Kat to get to know Bastion so that they can learn some more about him so all of that setup is great. Also, this is set in kind of like the Regency era or the Gilded era. So that was really cool. It kind of reminded me of like historical romance meets fey fantasy romance. So the first 100 pages, I was living, you guys. I really, really liked this book. I thought it was so fun. I was into it. I was having a good time. But unfortunately, the thing that really, really just turned me off from the book as I kept reading was Kat, our main character, was presented a very specific way. This badass robber thief was hired for this specifically because she is so well known, was known to be this very, you know, the wicked woman, right? That is a nickname, that is a reputation. And as soon as she gets to the castle and she's hired to do this, all of that bravado, all of that skill, all of that cunning, goes away, goes out the window. And her personality really changed. And I was really disappointed by that because I felt like we were told that she was this badass character. And then I just feel like she kind of lost all of that, became very naive and did not really show any of her skill set. And that was disappointing to me because I was really excited to see what she could do. And obviously, you know, she's gonna be off her game a little bit because this is a totally new setting, but she was hired to do this. And I just don't really feel like that ended up being executed very well. And then I had essentially the same issue with Bastion, our love interest, starts off cold dark, morally gray, has reasons to dislike Kat. We had a good setup for enemies to lovers, very, very quickly abandoned. He became a simp pretty much immediately, which I mean, we know he's going to become a simp eventually, right? It's enemies to lovers. But I feel like all of his big bad tendencies were gone so, so quickly. And I just found their dynamics super boring, super not engaging. I just didn't care anymore. You know, there was nothing for us to work towards. There was nothing for us to earn while reading this. And I just got so bored with these characters that I just didn't really care. And I ended up giving this book two stars. There are some interesting twists at the end. I'll give it that. But the characters really, really lost their spark for me. And what I liked about them in the beginning why I picked this book up I feel was not executed throughout the book so I didn't really like this and I'm really sad about it because I thought this was going to be so cool this just is not for me the next book that I read in the month of July was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett this book follows Emily Wilde she is a professor at Cambridge and she studies fae and fairies so she goes around the world researching them doing some field work and she is working on writing her Encyclopedia of Fairies she goes to this very like Nordic icy 
small village and is studying the fae and fairies there. While she is there, her colleague Wendell also ends up showing up and kind of assisting her, but Wendell has some secrets of his own, so their dynamic takes an interesting turn, and the two of them just kind of go on this adventure of discovering and learning more about the fae and fairies. I really, really loved this book. I gave this four stars. This is such a, once again, very whimsical, very magical read. I love fae and fairies. I have loved them since I was little. When I was younger, I would search around for fae and fairies in like gardens in my neighborhood, and I just have always been very fascinated by them. Wish they were real. And this book does a really good job of painting a world that is very like ours, but that just happens to have fae and fairies off in the forest, which was really, really cool. That was my favorite part of it. I think that if you're somebody who really loves fae and fairies and just the lore that goes along with that, you will love this because the author did a really, really good job of talking about all the different types of fae and fairies, where they live, what they do, how they act, how these fae act versus these ones. It was really, really well done. The characters in this book are fun and full of humor. There's some good banter. There is a bit of a romance subplot between Emily and Wendell. I would say don't go into this being like, oh, fantasy romance. Like there is a romance here. It does exist, but it's definitely not, I think, why you enjoy this book. I think that the whimsy and magical aspects of this book are really, really fun and super strong and very well done. And the romance is just kind of a bonus. The second book is coming out, I think, in early 2024, and I'm really excited for it. We'll absolutely be picking it up the day it comes out. This book is really fun and very magical, and I really liked it. The next book that I read in the month of July was Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This was a very highly anticipated read for me, and overall, I did really, really like this book. So this book follows Roman and Iris. They are rivals working at a newspaper together, both vying for the same job, and they are also anonymously communicating via magical letters. Iris does not know that she has been communicating and developing this friendship with Roman through letters, but Roman does know that it's her. And the two of them have a very, very well done rivals to reluctant allies to lovers dynamic. They also end up getting embroiled in this war of God and end up traveling kind of all over the country being journalists and then also just getting a lot more involved in the war than they planned on. What I really liked about this book, number one, the rivals to lovers was done very well. I really liked these two characters. Their disagreements felt genuine. They come from very different backgrounds. They see things very differently. And that I think built very good kind of opposition between the two of them. But then also once they ended up kind of letting their guard down and getting to know each other, I thought that they were really good together and really good for one another. And it was so cute watching them come together. Their banter was just like top tier. I also found the war aspect to be really interesting. I feel like this book, it is, I guess, technically a fantasy romance, but it feels more like a historical romance war novel with some magical realism. And I did like that. It wasn't what I was expecting, but I did end up liking that dynamic. This was a four star read for me. The only thing that kept it from being a five star is number one, I do wish that the fantasy elements were a little bit more present. There is like maybe some potential for in book two, there to be more fantasy going on. I wanted to see a little bit more of the gods and kind of how they're playing a role directly with the humans. I feel like we kind of saw them kind of on the sidelines a lot, but I would have liked to see them be a little bit more present. I think that that would have been really interesting. And then just like the ending, it's crazy, obviously, right? It's, it's a fantasy romance. The cliffhanger has to be insane. Those are the rules. But I just found Iris in particular, some of the things that happened with her at the end were a little bit frustrating. And I was like, oh, come on, Iris, like, don't do this. But she did. Hopefully all these things will be resolved in book two, but I am very, very excited for book two. I really liked this book overall. I was really into it. The audiobook is chef's kiss amazing. And I do think that the romance was very well done and very sweet. All right. And the very last book that I read in the month of July was The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. This is a YA fantasy romance. So our main character, she's kind of like a drug runner in this magical kingdom there are these drugs that people take and she is working kind of for this cartel almost. She has a deal that ends up going bad. She gets captured by the king and his guard and she ends up striking a deal with the king that instead of, you know, being executed or being taken to the dungeons, she will work alongside the king to investigate some mysterious things that have been happening in the kingdom, maybe some threats from some enemy kingdoms because our main character has a very special skill set, very special power that can aid the king in his search for what is going on. So this book started off once again, very fun. I was into the setup. I was into our main character in the beginning. I liked the way that things were going. We had some interesting magic systems. I think not totally your typical YA fantasy romance world building and, you know, magic and all of that. I liked that. It is a very classic YA fantasy romance love triangle, I will say, but 
I did think there was some, you know, interesting originality with the powers of our main character. And we had this addition of like monks and religion kind of going on. There was necromancy in this book, so it's a little bit gothic. I do think that this book definitely has some strengths, but one of kind of the major downfalls of this book, as I said, there is a love triangle. I have a feeling I know who's gonna be Endgame and I found him to be a little bit annoying and I just did not like any time he came onto the page. I was just so irritated with him. I just don't like the way that the love interest was written. There's two, as I said, it's a love triangle. I do like one better than the other, but I'm not super obsessed with either. And then the more that the book went on, our main character, I just felt like was a little too wisecracking girl bossy for me. And so, Overall, it just did not really do it for me. I gave this book a three star rating. I liked it. I just don't feel super in love with the characters and I have to love the characters. I have to love the romance in a fantasy romance. I have to be excited about our love interest. And I just wasn't. I just think that this book isn't for me. I don't think this is bad. I just think that I might not be the reader for it. All right, besties. So that is going to be it for me. Those are all of the books that I read in July. My search for a five star read continues. Please let me know down in the comments, what was the best book that you read in July? I would love to know. Maybe I can add it to my TBR. I can read it and hopefully love it just as much as you do. If you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave the crown emoji for Crown of Midnight, my only five star. Please make sure that you're following me on Instagram and Goodreads. Both are always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you were having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much and I will catch you guys in the next one.